Hello, everybody, and welcome to our uh, AMA today, Windows Updates and Intune, Drivers, Firmware, and Windows Auto Patch. My name is Joe Lurie. As I like to say in these, I'm probably the least important person here, except I'll be reading your questions. We have an entire cast of people that are going to be helping me out today. We have Varaf and da uh, David, Chris, and Wit. Uh, apparently, Wit will be right back. Yes, she is. Uh, a whole cast of people ready to answer your questions. We have a lot of people behind us to answer questions that we don't get to uh, that we don't get to live. So, without further ado, as they say, I'm going to let my presenters introduce themselves, and we're going to start the way I see them on the screen. So I see Varaf, and then I see David, and then looping down, I then see Chris, and then see Whit. So we'll start with Varaf. Good morning, folks. Good day, folks, wherever you are. My name is Viraf Gandhi. I'm a principal program manager on the Windows Auto Patch Engineering team. And I'm uh, here to chat about all the cool things that we are adding uh, for driver support, along with my colleagues over here. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm David Geyer. I am the principal product manager for Windows Updates and Intune. Uh, so I'm looking forward to uh, reveal a little bit about drivers and answer any other questions that you have about Windows Updates Management. Awesome. Hi, I'm Whit Williams. I'm a UX designer here at Microsoft. I work on uh, updates with David here, among other things. Happy to be here this morning. Thanks, Whit. And Chris, you're on mute, so you can come off mute and introduce yourself as well. Uh, hey, everybody. I'm Chris Sires. I am the product manager on Windows Auto Patch, working on drivers and firmware. Thanks. And, you know, in addition to answering your questions, we have a lot of cool stuff that we want to show you today. So I'm going to start with David. Is this some, you know, you and I talk all the time about Windows Update for Business, drivers and firmware. And I know we have some, some really cool stuff that's in preview and some things that you're ready to show. Do you want to uh, share your screen and start showing us some good stuff? Yeah, let's take it away and do a super quick demo. And um, if you're interested in seeing more, uh, you can go find a uh, demo that we did a couple years ago that's just as good, except doesn't show reporting at aka.ms slash Intune Drivers demo. So we're going to do a quick run in case you haven't seen that. So we're going to start in devices. And if you scroll down to where all the Windows Update stuff is, we're going to have a new node for driver updates. And so when you click that, you will see a list of all the policies that you've created and that um, you where you can create a new driver policy. And so one of the cool pro tips, I'm going to switch to another one for now. Um, we've added this column called drivers to review. And that is kind of a call to action when you have a manual approval policy. I'm going to show that creating a policy and explain that in just a moment. Um, but it's a really great way to have a call to action uh, to recognize, hey, there's some new drivers that have shown up since the last time I've did I've taken a look that I may want to look at and make decisions about. And one of the cool things we've done is in Intune, when you click a driver, when you look, click a policy name, that typically takes you into the policy properties. And it does here as well. But if you want to drive directly to the list of drivers, you can click that drivers to review link and it shortcuts straight into the recommended drivers tab. So let's go back and take a look at the options that you have when you create a driver policy. And go. There really are only two settings today. Um, you can choose to manually approve all drivers. And what that means is that once you assign devices to that policy, no drivers will be deployed to devices until they're approved by you in the management interface. Um, so you have complete control. Um, it's a good way just to block all drivers and let just a few through if you want to, or you can develop a routine and a pattern for managing those drivers on a consistent basis. Generally, though, we recommend, just like most uh, Windows Update for Business policies, use the automatically approve approach. And what that does is you can set up uh, multiple rings, just like you do for feature updates or quality updates. Um, so you can have validation in the early rings. But with automatic approvals, drivers by default, when they are published by the publisher, uh, go through the, uh, the deferral setting here at the bottom and then are offered to devices automatically without you having to manage those. Um, and as you'll see, once they're approved, you'll have the ability to manage those drivers. The rest of the settings are normal standard 
um, scope tags, assignments, standard stuff in Intune. Um, so let's go take a, a look at what you see once you have collected inventory from devices. These drivers are drivers that are in Windows Update. And so the way this list is populated is from those devices that you've assigned to the policy, when they scan for updates, Windows Update says, oh, this device is assigned to a Windows Update for Business driver policy. So I'm going to start to collect that inventory of the driver updates. So I want to be really clear. This is an inventory of updates available to the devices in the policy, not a list of installed uh, drivers. So it's not an inventory of drivers. It's a list of available updates to those devices. And you see, we have two tabs there. We have recommended drivers and other drivers. The recommended drivers are what we like to call Microsoft's best match. So when the device scans for updates, Windows Update does a whole lot of calculations and processing to try to find the best match driver for every component that is on the device that's available in Windows Update. Normally that best match is the latest driver that the publisher has marked as a required or recommended driver. And it's the newest one of those. And so these are the drivers that would have been deployed automatically when the device scanned if it wasn't managed. So this is what you normally get when you use update rings and just leave um, drivers to allow. Except here they're under management. So you get to make it a choice about um, which drivers are being deployed and you'll be able to manage those as well. Uh, the other tab shows the rest of the drivers and there's going to be a longer list there because it's a combination of drivers that are applicable to devices but are marked as optional by the publisher of the driver. Um, many times, uh, just about all firmware is marked as optional. For example, BIOS updates, UFI updates are almost always marked as optional. Um, but other drivers that OEMs are publishing uh, that they want to make available but not necessarily deploy to everybody they make optional. So you have now the ability to see those drivers and to choose whether or not you want to deploy those drivers. These are not going to be deployed automatically if you create an automatic policy that's only the recommended drivers. The other drivers that are here are drivers that used to be recommended but are now older. A newer driver was published and this one is still available because some devices haven't updated to it. And so it's still opt available for you for management. That does a couple of really cool things. If you go back and find that one of the recommended drivers you decide that you need to pause because you're worried there's an issue with it, the previously approved driver will still be offered to devices that don't have that. So you're able to do a pause of updates on a per driver basis, not necessarily pausing all drivers, which is a really great uh, ability to keep devices as current as you possibly can. Hello, puppy dog. <laughs> um, so now we'll show a little bit about management and talk about the management options. So I have a driver here. Devices will be in one of four states, or drivers, excuse me, will be in one of four states. The first state is needs review. So when a new driver shows up because it's been, a uh, device has been added that brings in new drivers or a new driver is published, it starts in needs review as a signal to you to take a look at it. In an automatic approval policy, this will automatically move to approved and will have the start date in the first deployment column so you can see that. When you select the driver, you have the ability to manage that driver. One of your options is to decline it. So if you decide that this is a driver that you don't want to deploy to devices, you can decline it and it takes it off of that needs review list so that you know you've looked at it and you can bring that count back in the policy list back down to zero. The other option is approve. And when you choose to approve that, you get to specify the date that you want to make that driver start being offered to devices. So for example, you may want to make it uh, start on the weekend so that it can start uh, deploying to, de to devices when people are not working. And then hopefully it's there for them in the morning on Monday Another option that customers that we've seen in the private preview choose is the next patch Tuesday. And that can start to align drivers. And the, when they have, the ones that have a reboot can reboot along with the quality update. And so that's another option. So the last thing I'm going to show you is that we do have uh, reporting for drivers. 
And so when you go to reports and Windows Update, you'll find the, the driver's option there, the driver's report. Um, the reports for drivers are currently built around the drivers that you chose to approve. So instead of pivoting these around policies like we did for uh, feature and expedited updates, which only have one update per policy today, um, we chose to do this initially around the driver. So you can see the result of the driver updates across multiple rings when you've done that. Otherwise, the reports are very, very similar. Not only do we give you a, an awesome summary of where devices are in the process and how many have completed or have the potential error, we give you per device detail, the identity of that device, um, which policy it's in. So again, if you've got multiple policies, you're going to be able to see which policy that driver is in, or if the device is potentially in more than one policy, uh, you'll be able to see that here. Uh, you can see that that driver is scheduled for a, a future uh, availability date. So you get the specific status. So we say in progress, but you can give you the details that downloading, installing, waiting to restart, scheduled, meaning waiting for um, the start date, or is it in offer ready, which means it's ready. And the next time that device scans, it should be offered for the update. And if we found any errors, it'll be here in the alert message. Um, not applicable means we didn't find any yet. Um, and we do have the standard failures report under monitoring. I'm not going to show that today in the interest of time, but that's where you can go in and get deeper details into those alerts and errors, as well as an explanation and a recommended remediation, just like we do for feature and expedited updates. And so that's my quick run through, my quick lap through drivers in Intune. And I'm going to hand it over to Chris, who's going to show you how AutoPatch is going to take advantage of that and make that available to AutoPatch customers. Actually, we're going to get to Chris in just a little bit. We have a couple of <laughs> questions to uh, a lot of, we, we had 15 questions to start this and we have about 35 questions just since you started your demo. So a lot of great questions coming up. So we will absolutely get to Chris's demo as well. But first, I want to ask a question that NL Mitchell asked. He actually posted this uh, yesterday, I believe, um, or even the day before. Are there any plans to be able to disable optional updates via update ring policy in Intune? So, David, this is coming to you anyway. But are there any plans to be able to disable optional updates via update ring policy in Intune? It's kind of causing a headache for us with some users going and clicking things that they shouldn't on their device. And on the flip side of that, um, I think it was Mags replied under NL Mitchell saying, we kind of want the opposite. We want to mandatory deploy these optional updates. So what are some of the management things that we can do with the optional updates in Windows Update for Business? Yeah, no, that's a great question. And um, so I'll talk first about feature updates. Um, so with feature update policies with the WFB deployment service that we have in Intune, uh, any optional updates because these devices are managed when they're assigned to the policy are not actually offered as optional updates. Um, and so you get that control immediately so that end users aren't overriding your management decisions when you apply, assign devices to those policies. And if you've been following our journey in Intune with the Windows Update for Business Deployment Service, you've seen that we first created feature update policies. Uh, we then, uh, filled in a gap by creating expedited quality update policies. But now we're on the verge of uh, delivering driver updates. And so I'm not like revealing anything special if you were to follow that line and say, you know, maybe quality update management could be next and bringing a very similar kind of experience um, and that kind of control. And then we have heard feedback around, um, you know, wanting to block those, wanting to approve them, um, and then when they're approved, making those, um, sometimes making them optional available. So those are all things that are, are in the works. And for example, in drivers that I just demoed, uh, when you go and approve a, any driver update, but for example, a optional driver, then that driver becomes essentially required for that device. So our thinking is that because you, as the administrator have made the decision to deploy that update, it is now something that you have set your intent that that device should have that driver update installed. And so we don't make it optional. We don't put it behind waiting for the user to approve it. It gets deployed as a required update at that point because it's under management. 
Thanks, David. I hope that answered both, both of those questions there. We're going to move on to the next question, which comes from Nathan. And Nathan is asking for a recommended approach for driver management for newly, uh, newly registered devices, whether it's a configuration manager, brand new device enrolled with uh, OSD or if it's a Windows Autopilot that uh, natively Azure AD joined. You know, what's the recommended approach for driver management uh, just to prevent environmental drift and ensure just to maintain control of those drivers? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. And we've learned a lot through the private preview. And what I've really seen are two approaches. I have seen some organizations that really want full control over each and every driver. And they want to approve those drivers um, on their schedule and only the ones that they want to approve. There's a, a lot of control uh, that they feel they need to have based off of experience or because of unique hardware situations um, or other conditions. Um, and that's what the manual approval policy was created for, is for those cases where you need absolute control over each and every driver. However, that can become a lot of work. Um, as you've seen, uh, when we were looking at one of the policies, we had nearly 100 drivers available in the recommended tab and approving those um, and maintaining those can be a lot of work, especially if you have multiple policies with different you know, device models or things like that. So what I generally recommend is following the Windows Update for Business, you know, keep current strategy and approach, which is have multiple policies as rings, uh, organize your devices really smartly so that you get really good representation in those rings and then do automatic approvals. And that way the recommended drivers will be deployed automatically based off of that deferral schedule that you set up and you've got a feedback set, uh, capability set up in case a driver does cause problems. Um, most don't, they've already gone through a certification process and um, are going through a gradual rollout, if you will, um, with the uh, consumer devices. And so if any issues are discovered through that, then those drivers can be um, pulled by the driver manufacturer or improved. Um, and so by the time um, you're working on them, that is already going on. And so that's kind of our thinking is, is go through that, use the automatic approach, just like you do for um, driver, you know, quality update deferrals today. Cool. Thanks. It was, a, it was a great question. I'm going to uh, switch gears a little bit, and I, I still think David might be able to do this. I'll answer it first because I, I think I know the answer, but I would love to get some uh, confirmation of my answer. So uh, Geert Jan, I believe I pronounced that name correctly, and I apologize if I didn't, is asking if uh, Windows Update for Business drivers and firmware is only available, if it's available through Intune or if it requires the Intune suite. And I... And for those of you that are listening that aren't familiar with the Microsoft Intune suite, uh, come back and join us at 7.30, <laughs> at 9.30 Pacific time. We have another AMA on the Intune suite with Matt Call and Danny Guillory and, and Dilip will be joining us as well. So come back and join us for, uh, for that AMA. But I believe Windows Update for Business Drivers and Firmware does not require that additional uh, Intune suite. Can, uh, can you confirm that for me? I can confirm that uh, it does not require the Intune suite license, um, but it does require either a Windows Enterprise E3 subscription or greater. And mm -hmm. we have all that documented. There's a few others um, that are also valid. We have that documented. The best place to look is if you look up the feature, excuse me, the expedite update documentation in for Intune, we actually list all the uh, license that are um, applicable that enable expedited updates and it's going to be the same story for driver updates because we're going through the new windows update for business deployment service which is a, a cloud value add for enterprise device management yeah and that's again so windows windows enterprise e3 which comes with or e5 which comes with microsoft 365 yep. e3 or uh, great thanks for that confirmation yep. that's right that's what i'm pretty sure i was there uh we have a question from uh christopher and I'm going to start with WIT because this might be part of the UX, and I, I'm going to just open that up after that. Christopher is asking if a driver or a new driver is available for multiple devices, but is listed with a hard block for one of those devices, will the system intelligently know not to deploy that driver to a device, make it available to other devices which don't have that known hard block? I think the answer is yes. Um, <clears throat> that basically, 
So I'm not as familiar with this concept of a hard block, but the, the policy's job is just to push the latest and greatest that's applicable to that device. Um, so if it hasn't installed it, it'll go. Um, the idea though is that um, any any of the like hard block settings on the actual device should still stay in place. So it should, so, shouldn't override yeah. that, but correct okay, me if I'm, I'm wrong, gonna, David. I'm gonna, hopefully I'm gonna try to clarify a little bit as well. So. As Christopher asked, if a new driver is available for multiple devices, but I think he means if it's targeted to multiple devices. Mm -hmm. So if I'm deploying it to a group and a device is in that group, and that but that device has a hard block, uh, will the will the system know not to install it? And I, I believe that the answer is still the same. I think the right. answer is yeah. yes. Yeah. Great. All right, so I promised you we're going to get to an auto patch demo, so we're going to get to that auto patch demo now. So. Uh, Chris, uh, again, come off mute and and demo away with Windows Auto Patch. Sure, yeah. And uh, I just switched over to my uh, test tenant here. Uh, so all that awesome functionality that uh, Intune built, we wanted to make sure that Auto Patch customers uh, could take advantage of that as soon as possible. So if you are an Auto Patch customer, uh, once the Intune functionality is out, you'll be able to go to your devices and then release management tab. Uh, pick the release settings, and in here you'll see a checkbox. It says, uh, click here, basically. This is for a preview. Uh, this is going to release as a preview when Intune ships, and uh, we'll make it available pretty much the exact same time. Uh, all right, so going to hit the buttons here, and joining this preview should, in the background, have created some policies. So let's go take a look at that. They should be in here somewhere. Driver updates. And there they are. These are the policies that were just automatically created by joining the, uh, the preview. If you would like to use manual instead of automatic for these policies, it's very simple. You just go back to where you were before and switch that to be self-managed. And that will take effect. And then the policies that were created before will be deleted and replaced with new policies that are uh, manual. And you can see that here now. And that's it for Auto Patch. So we're, we're talking about Auto Patch and, and how this can be can be done through Auto Patch. Why don't you talk us through a little bit what Auto Patch even is for those people that are joining us that maybe haven't heard of Auto Patch or or haven't seen it, how it can be useful for them. Can you just talk a little bit about what is Auto Patch? I could, but I think Varaf would do a better job. <laughs> uh, thanks, Chris. So Auto Patch is a, a service that is available to uh, enterprise customers who have Windows E3 licensing. And uh, the primary goal is to uh, act as the patch admin for uh, the on the customer's behalf. So here, Microsoft is managing the Windows updates and uh, Office and Teams updates on behalf of the customer in their environment. And what we do with Auto Patch also is uh, we provide a mechanism for these updates to roll out safely in your environment, in the customer's environment. So we use the concepts of deployment rings that we create on behalf of the customers and have um, devices assigned to different rings. And we roll these updates out gradually from uh, test first, fast, broad, which is uh, all the different rings that uh, are available. Um, a recent uh, functionality, a new functionality that's about to get released in Auto Patch is this concept of Auto Patch groups. Because one of the feedback that we've heard from customers is that the standard for deployment ring does not meet our business needs on how we segment our devices based on either departments or users. So that's new capability that is coming in right now where uh, IT admins can create customized groups based on how their business is set up. So that way you can have a finance ring, an accounting ring, or rings uh, or, or groups, uh, auto patch groups based on regions, et cetera. So uh, again, the goal is uh, IT admin can specify intent on how they want to see updates flowing, Microsoft updates flowing in their environment, and then auto patch, make sure that we safely deploy those in their environment and provide the right insights into how those deployment updates are doing in their environment. 
And you said uh, uh, Autopass Groups is coming. Where can we find out when it's actually available? Is there a, a blog site? Yeah, so uh, if you go to aka.ms uh, Autopatch, uh, that's uh, a, a, an important site to uh, to kind of remember. Uh, we pro publish monthly blog updates on all the cool features that we are releasing within Autopatch. You can read more about Autopatch groups uh, on the latest uh, May blog. Cool. Thanks, Raf. Right, let's get back to some questions. We got a question from Jeremiah asking, and this is kind of a, a general Intune question as well. So I'm going to ask uh, David maybe to be able to answer this because different policies have different timelines. But Jeremiah asks, after a device has installed a given update, what's the expected time frame for the device to report back to Intune that the update has indeed installed? Ah, great question. Um, we are, like the simple short answer is that we are working towards making sure that that data is updated within about eight hours is the goal that we have. Um, now that is dependent on when the device sends the telemetry to Microsoft, and then we are able to process that and make that available. Um, so there are some limitations that are a little bit outside of our control, but that is uh, the target that we're shooting for. Cool. Um, the way I think about it is, if you make a change in the morning or something happens in the morning, you wanna be able to see it before you go home for work. Um, and so that's that's very much what we're trying to do. And, and even shorter than eight hours would be nice, but um, you know we got to take our steps to get there. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Uh, we have a, a question from, again, I'm gonna, I hope I do this right, from Rhoda Wing, who's asking, uh, going back to auto patch, if we've already implemented update rings, how hard would it be to switch over to auto patch and driver management through auto patch? So we'll start with Chris on that one. Uh, it should be extremely simple. There, there's pretty much nothing you'll need to do there except for uh, join the preview. And so eventually it'll be GA and you won't even have to do that. So yeah, we're just bringing this functionality into auto patch for our customers. Great. Ref, you look like you're, you're nodding along. Do you have anything you want to add to that? Yeah, I think, I think that one of the key things we wanted to do is, uh, as I said earlier, the goal of auto patch is to allow IT admins to specify intent and then auto patch as a service takes care of the deployment of the work behind the scenes. Right now, uh, up until now, we were focused on Windows updates and Office and things like that. I think with all the new capabilities coming into Boof BDS and uh, through Intune that David just highlighted, we felt that this was a, a great opportunity for us to bring driver management as a supported scenario within Auto Patch because we keep hearing from our IT admins time and time again that uh, drivers uh, they need better control on drivers, and now that they've invested in Auto Patch uh, for their environment, they want to kind of see drivers flowing from uh, those uh, different uh, auto patch groups and deployments, et cetera. So uh, this is gonna be a, uh, an area of focus uh, for us and we are partnering very closely with uh, David and uh, the Woof PDS team uh, on uh, making various scenarios light up in the driver space. And I think I'm just gonna chime in, putting a little, hi, UX designer here. We've done lots and lots of research. We know very, very well from hours of conversation with folks, either through CCP or even just, you know, customer meetings, we know how hard it is to manage these drivers. And so our goal is to not only make automation easier, but just to make switching easier because, you know, we want to free you up to do other things and um, whether you want to do more hands-on stuff or kind of just let it ride, like we want to support you for that. So um, that that is the big goal here. Thanks. And when with talks about CCP, that's our customer connection program. Sorry. <laughs> and we're, we're happy to give you information about that as well. If you just DM any one of us, we can we can help you with that. We have about eight questions that have come in. I, I've seen from, I, I have so many, they're just scrolling so fast. I, I, over, my monitor is over here. They're scrolling so fast, I can't even get to them all. But uh, the questions on when will Windows Update for Business, drivers and firmware be available? <laughs> I've seen that question <laughs> the scroll through like movie credits, uh, that same question over and over again. When will this be available? Yeah, uh, I think that's probably the most frequent question I get in email um, in, in Teams in a week. Um, it is coming very soon. 
Uh, it is a quality driven release. And in fact, I, as soon as we're done here, I'm going to go look at the reports to see if the last bug fix did what we want it to do. And if, they, if that's a good sign. Um, and so it's as soon as it's ready. And what I would recommend is keep an eye on the windows it pro blog because, uh, the, uh, communications team there is waiting to hit send on the uh, blog that we're going to post that will announce the availability of, of that feature in Intune. Um, and when we announce it, we're going to be doing kind of a staged rollout through the scale units in Intune. Um, so we're going to announce it right when we start that process. Great, thanks. Yeah, I know. People, yeah, soon. soon Very soon, soon. soon. But I do love that you specify it's a, it's based on quality, right? It's not based on the calendar. It's based on quality. As soon as we fix all those, you know, have that bug dash and fix all those bugs. Or, or one bug. I don't know. It could be one. Uh, as soon as it's <laughs> David fixed, gets though, this question a lot. <laughs> it'll be ready. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. Um, and you know, it's not like we're... Uh, relaxed about, hey, we've got all the time in the world to deploy it. We want to mm -hmm. ship this as soon right. as possible, of yeah. um, you know, because we know that customers are looking for it. They are needing this capability in their enterprises. And so we need to get this uh, released. And we also need to do that because we've learned some really great things from the private preview and from our excellent private preview customers and have a, a set of about five or six key enhancements that we also want to add this year if we can make that happen and so we need to ship it so that we can then spend a little time working on those improvements gotcha we have a great question from paul that i'm going to start with david but then i'm going to move over to Varaf to answer on the auto patch side of things but paul's asking are there any plans to allow intune or windows update for business specifically to manage additional update paths for instance edge updates office updates store <laughs> updates vs code updates just anything other than like the, the general Windows and driver updates. So start with Windows Update for Business, but I think it's a great question for AutoPatch as well. Yeah, so Windows Update for Business is going to be focused on those Windows OS updates and those updates that are delivered through Windows Update to devices. Um, Intune is doing uh, a lot of work on app management as well. And, mm -hmm. um, I'm not working directly on that, but I know that uh, some of my friends and I know, I know Whit is actually supporting that project as well. Um, and so, you know, apps are as, or sometimes more important than the operating system updates and uh, first party as well as third party. And so that's definitely an area of investment in Intune and you should be seeing some really great stuff coming this year and uh, building on that going forward as well. We're thinking a lot about updates in a lot of different spaces in Intune, uh, but I cannot share any updates on that at this time, unfortunately. Thank you. I was just going to say we have a <laughs> feedback link that we can add, and my production staff is, is already two steps in front of me, of course. But let's go back to Auto Patch. You know, Auto Patch, we know you're, you're doing Windows updates as well. How about Edge and VS Code updates and store updates? Is Auto Patch bringing any of that uh, any of those updates in to that service? Yeah, that's actually a very good question. So Auto Patch today uh, helps manage uh, Office updates, Edge, and Teams. But what we are working with all those different engineering teams is how do we bring better or more granular control to those various update type. Like similar to what Chris is doing uh, over here with the driver updates, he's working very closely with David on making sure that we have the the granularity that an IT admin will need to express intent within the auto patch uh, UX experience. We're kind of doing the same thing on office updates. Uh, for example, like uh, one of the common feedback we get from uh, customers on office is, I want to change the channel, uh, the office update channel, because uh, I, I may want SEC, or I want the monthly channel, et cetera. So we're working with the office team to bring those uh, those different capabilities from with, into the auto patch uh, UX experience. So the customers can decide what month, what channel, office update channel do they want to be on. That's just one of the examples. Mm -hmm. We've got a slew of other things that we are investigating right now on uh, Teams and Edge. And uh, keep an eye out on the auto patch blog link that uh, I uh, called out earlier. As we get more and more into it, we'll have the ability to announce that. And uh, also, if there's feedback, 
definitely uh, pass your feedback along because we are constantly talking to customers. We've got TAC programs, et cetera, that we work closely with customers on evolving our service to better meet your needs. We love Thanks. feedback. <laughs> and because you mentioned teams just now, I have to jump over to Jan's question. Jan's asking, uh, first, thank you for allowing you know, Jan to ask a question. My question is according to Teams Room. So I know Microsoft Teams Room, Teams Room Premium, MTR. They're a little bit different than just Teams, which is what you mentioned. But with Teams Room, Microsoft Teams Room, we're, uh, Jan adds, we're about to, we're adding newly about 305 Microsoft Teams Rooms to Intune. What are the available options for this specific environment with update rings? So are we updating, do Teams rooms, Microsoft Teams rooms, they get updated any differently than a regular Windows device would be updated? That is such a great question that I don't know the answer. Um, I know principally if um, it is a Teams room device that is based off of Windows and, the, uh, and Teams has gone and built that in a way so that it uses standard Windows update stuff, then um, update ring should work, but not all Teams rooms are built that way. Uh, so I think it depends on the specific team room. Um, we, I could definitely go and try to see if I can get more information on that because um, I don't know any more yeah, detail. It's something that. that we can probably answer. We'll, we can do research and answer it after the, unless one of our, people down there, unless they know the answer to that and they can answer it in the chat. Uh, we can we can find that out. Thanks, thanks for trying to, to answer it though. <laughs> we got a question that came in from Twitter as well um, about the coexistence between auto patch and update rings. And when I was at a conference, uh, the Midwest Management Summit MMS a couple of months ago, I got that question a lot. So I'm gonna, that's why I'm bringing this Twitter question forward. How do auto patch coexist with the update rings I've already made in Intune? Can devices be in two update rings at once? Which one wins? Auto patch, the original mm -hmm. update ring. What happens when, when, you know, I already have update rings configured. When auto patch comes in, what happens then? So maybe uh, Verafa Chris first, and then we'll go back to the update. Uh, we'll go back to David for that. Chris, do you want to take that? I could. I think uh, Wit said she wanted to take it though. Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, no, uh, different question. Sorry. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Um, so yes, I think it is possible for you to have a device in multiple rings, and uh, install is going to win in that scenario. Um, so if you are trying to ins if you are trying to deploy the driver in. Uh, in one group and you were trying to block it in another, I believe the behavior is that it will install. David can correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, when we're, when we're talking about the driver update policies, Chris, you're absolutely right. Um, if you pause a driver in one ring and the device is in, uh, excuse me, in one policy and the device is in two policies and that same driver is approved in the other, uh, the install uh, intent is what wins and uh, that driver will get deployed. When we're looking at update rings, which is a more MDM based set of settings, having a device in more than one update ring policy or even having it also in a settings catalog policy that addresses the same settings creates potential conflict issues and the outcome is actually non-deterministic. So, you know, a really strong recommendation is to have a device in only one update ring at a time. And so as you go to transition into auto patch, I would expect that you'd want to pull those devices or those groups off of your update ring policies as you move them into your auto patch management space. Um, and I think Varaf or Chris could probably add a little bit more about the process of doing that than, than I have at my fingertips. Um, but ultimately the principle will be have a device in one uh, policy for that kind of setting at a time, and then you won't run into unexpected behaviors or issues. Non-deterministic behaviors, right? <laughs> PM talk. <laughs> it's a great word. I love that word. Uh, Varup, did you want to add anything to that since you- uh, No, I, I was just going to add, I was just going to add that as part of enrolling your devices into the auto patch service, right? So we have this enrollment flow where uh, you could actually take your existing rings and move all the devices from your existing groups, essentially, into auto patch service. 
So uh, I think as David mentioned that once you move it into auto patch, let auto patch groups manage all the uh, windows updates, et cetera, uh, uh, that are targeted to devices in those groups and uh, not create a situation where you might get into the undeterministic uh, situation. Thanks. Um, I'm going to come, go, come over to Wit since she said she could answer a different question. And I'm going to ask her that question. Wit, Edward's asking, how do we roll back updates? Are there any reports to track a, a rollback update? So you can't roll them back yet. Um, what you can do, though, is if you've already pushed um, a driver, you'll be able to go and you can pause that rollout. <clears throat> and so um, basically, you you when you find something that's recommended, you approve it, you can schedule it, whatever. It'll go out. Um, say a bug happens and you say, oh no, I got to stop this. We've determined it's related to this driver. You go into the policy, you just click on that driver name and then you hit um, suspend. And what that will do is it'll keep it from going out to additional drivers. So while you don't roll it back from devices that have already installed it, you can prevent it from being installed on additional uh, additional devices. And I, and I would like to add, like I think mm -hmm. driver rollback is one of the feedbacks that we've heard from customers pretty regularly right mm -hmm. like how hey we can roll back quality updates etc feature updates why are we not able to roll back drivers because at the end of the day drivers are like an extension to the operating system anyways so yeah this is uh, top of mind for uh, all of us on the call uh, and a few more people mm -hmm. who are part of this whole uh, update ecosystem and uh, needless to say, we are uh, looking at it uh, with urgency. Uh, we don't have anything to announce today in terms of dates, et cetera, but this is definitely uh, part of our journey of making drivers a first-class citizen. Yeah, I think that's great. Um, I remember when, when rolling back a driver became available in like XP, XP Service Pack 2, whenever it was, because uh, I was an IT admin then, I'm like, even then it was great so now that it would bring it into windows updates updates for business um, i can't wait to see driver rollback available in that so thank you Whit, for letting us know that at some point we can expect that we have like a very that. long wish list so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. so we've had a couple of questions that came through already about you know how do i transition from windows update for business to auto patch and what happens if i have a conflict between the two or a device that's in different policies can we actually use auto patch in conjunction with Windows Update for Business? Yes. Is it an all or nothing, or can we use them together? Yeah, so the, the functionality in auto patch that we're delivering uh, shortly here will be built on top of the functionality that uh, Windows Update for Business has built. And it's also, well, pardon me, it's built on top of the Intune functionality um, that David's team built on top of the Windows Update mm -hmm. for Business functionality. So all this stuff works great together. And so we can, so that we can use them both together, right? Yeah. So absolutely, not a problem. Great. Yeah. Just continue to follow those those guidelines. Um, you know, as as Chris showed, um, we're not hiding anything. So when you use Auto Patch to go and manage your updates, uh, those policies are available for you to inspect and and potentially take action that you won't be able to do with directly with the Auto Patch interface um, when needed. Uh, in most cases, uh, we think that you won't need to do that. You'll be able to use the, the standard interface um, and some of the enhancements coming in that direction as well. Um, follow the basic guidance, though. The device should be in one policy of a type at a time, and uh, you'll be in good shape. Great. Thank you. And I have a question. We have a, about seven minutes left. So I think we have time for a couple more questions. So I would cut question from Elmer, which is a great question. I can't believe it hasn't come up yet. Do driver and firmware updates, we're talking about drivers and firmware. Does that include BIOS updates as well? BIOS and UFI, um, and those drivers are the ones that you're almost always going to find those in the uh, other tab of the driver list, because most of the time those are published as um, optional updates. Or, or manual updates. And uh, so you'll have the ability then to choose to deploy those out. Um, a common question we get on that is, hey, what about you know password protected BIOS or those sorts of things? And in most cases, and this is why we still recommend using rings and being you know doing some validation, but we saw, I think only one case where this wasn't true, where 
the BIOS publishers have a way of publishing drivers. So they use a secure install method that is able to do so without requiring the password because it's delivered payload securely through Windows Update. And so once it's validated on the device, it's able to go through that secure path and do those updates reliably without requiring the BIOS password to be entered. Um, so that turns out to you know be a non-blocker uh, so you don't have to wait for users mm -hmm. to enter that password if they even know what it is. Which hopefully they do not. They <laughs> don't need to know what that password is exactly. David, I would I, like to add actually one more thing. So all the capabilities on drivers and firmware that we described today is for things that are available in the Windows Update Catalog, right? So right. Windows Update Catalog supports the ability to deploy for publishers, either OEMs or IHVs, et cetera, or even peripheral manufacturers to publish their driver updates on uh, Windows Update. But uh, again, at the end of the day, it's up to the manufacturer to go use Windows Catalog and Microsoft has been pushing uh, hardware vendors for I think at least over a decade now to get all their driver updates on Boo. So I think that's a caveat we have to remember where there are some updates that may, if it's not published on Boo, then it's not going to come down through the channels. Will. Yeah, Will Windows, Windows update. update. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I, uh, just to build on Veroff's uh, comments, I think there's well over a million driver updates available in Windows Update today over that time period. Um, and so it's, it's pretty common we we i uh, can't remember i've seen so many different manufacturers uh, as we've looked at the data through the private preview um i can't recall a case where a customer said hey there's this driver i wanted to install and it wasn't available um, that doesn't mean it didn't happen um, but i think those cases are moving further and further into the rarity case and uh you know just again i think what Veroff was kind of pointing to is if you have a driver that is not available, go to your uh, OEM or your manufacturer and say, hey, I want this stuff to be managed through this really awesome new driver management stuff in Intune and AutoPatch. Um, please publish the Windows update so I can do that. Yeah, yeah. And actually, that's, that's a good point, David. I think most of these, uh, most of the hardware manufacturers, especially for BIOS and firmware, they like to do it through uh, as optional updates. Right. And the fact that now there is an ability for IT admins to view and manage optional updates for drivers from within the uh, management, the Intune management experience. I think that's a huge step in the right direction and makes it super easy for uh, for IT admins to actually manage those things. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Um, I wish we had, we could keep talking about this. I wish we had more than two minutes left, but we don't. So uh, I'm going to start saying goodbyes. I'm going to ask everyone for final thoughts. But before Oops. I do, I want to thank everyone for your great questions. We've had so many questions come in. Please continue to, to uh, stay with us for these AMAs. We have one coming up after this on iOS, Mac OS management. And then we have that Intune suite one we talked about earlier. And, and we're going to end the day with Android and Linux, which is going to be an, an amazing one. But I will be on the next one. So I will see everyone uh, that's joining us. I'll see you on the iOS and Mac OS one as well. So I'd like to get some final uh, final thoughts. Again, I'm going to go just the way I see you on my screen. So for up, then David, then loop around to Chris, and then Wits for up. Uh, so thank you, everybody, for uh, passing all these questions to us and giving us the opportunity to talk to you about the capabilities that we're working on. As I said, uh, we are just starting this journey with uh, driver and firmware management. There's a lot of stuff in our backlog. If there are things that you would like to see prioritize uh, ahead because of certain uh, business reasons, definitely keep getting that feedback over to us. We are listening and we are uh, making sure that auto patch and uh, Intune as a product aligns with what our customer needs. Thanks, David. Thank you, Varaf, for trying to create more work for me. Um, but uh, but to echo that sentiment, and uh, you know, as Witt said a little earlier, we really do value the feedback. Um, it helps us to either confirm the path we're on or to rethink um, the, the direction we're going. As I mentioned, the feedback we got in private preview has set us up with about five or six really good opportunities for improvement that you know we we got various 
stages of, of making progress on. Uh, so the questions are great. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Thank you for being good Microsoft customers and for using our products without you. We aren't here. Uh, we don't get to do the fun stuff. We don't get to design and build this and, and ship it. Uh, keep an eye on the Windows IT Pro blog and you'll know when this is coming out and we'll have links to documentation and all kinds of cool stuff and, and another walkthrough. And um, yeah, th thank you so much for, for your time. Thanks, Chris. Um, yeah, most everything I'd say has already been said. Definitely in the uh, Windows Auto Patch team, we are iterating in this space right now. So if you have feedback, please, please send us that feedback. Uh, we will take it and we will use it. Thank you very much for being here. <laughs> and what? <clears throat> yes, give us feedback. We want your edge cases. We want your dream scenarios. And um, in addition to helping us be aware of your needs, it also helps us prioritize things. So uh, please, feedback. Yes. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone out there. Thank you, everyone that's helping answer questions in chat. And we'll see you all soon.